Hey, it's Talk Gnosis, and we're back with Sam Robinson from Pansofers.com, continuing our discussion about the kerning technique, the mail letter technique, whatever you want to call it. And today we're going to focus on some, some hidden secrets within hidden secret societies, so secrets within secrets within secrets within groups that claim that they have a lot of secrets and really don't. Uh, Sam, um, before we do jump into this fascinating topic and before I get some angry emails, um, I first have to do... Uh, our commercial for our Patreon. Everybody, we can't do the show without your financial help. Uh, for as little as a dollar per piece of media per month, you can keep us going. Uh, we do have some costs, and it's uh, you can put a cap on that. So if you're scared that we're going to do a million pieces of uh, media in a month, or we're going to charge you a million dollars, you can cap it to a buck. Give us a buck. Uh, so that's uh, patreon.com slash Gnostic. You can also do one-time donations at paypal.me slash Gnostic. I was talking to Sam when, uh, in between uh, the, the camera being on about the joys of freelancing. So I understand if you do not have any money, you can help us out in other ways. Tell people about the show, share it on your social media, take an episode, email it to a pal. That's all a huge, huge, huge help. Okay, we're out of the hell of the commercial. We can ascend to the heaven of this fascinating conversation about this fascinating technique coming from fascinating people. Uh, so, Sam, there we talk a lot about different esoteric orders on the show. We've done specific shows on uh, the Golden Dawn, on Theosophy, um, uh, on others, not all of them. We're something. We're going to cover them all. We're going to Pokemon and catch them all. But, but Sam, I, I think something that, that's going to blow a lot of people's minds might even be controversial. Is is all of the, the, a wide variety of orders? Some some that may, people may even see as I don't want to say opposite to each other, but uh, that people think of as being not connected at all. We're actually often, perhaps secretly, doing some sort of version on the Maelander technique, right? The Maelander kerning technique. So I, I understand that the the original OTO and perhaps you know we can have a, a little bit of discussion to, about that later. What what we mean by original OTO, but the OTO, the Theos uh, the Theosophical Society, uh, the Golden Dawn, some of the Martinist orders, Memphis Misrium, uh, some of these these orders, um, I, and I should say, of course, some of these are not cohesive. Uh, orders, right? That there's also splinters and uh, different streams within these traditions, but at least some of these streams have some sort of engagement with the Maelander technique. C can you tell us a little bit about that? Right. So what I um, essentially discovered when I first came to Germany um, was that not not only did you know the GD and 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 the OTO have this hidden technique in common, but I soon found out that there was a time. And the vast majority of occult orders had an internal alchemy system from Mylander and Kerning, influenced by both variations of it. Um, you know, where the, where the East has Qigong, this, this was the Qigong of the West, okay, a spiritual alchemy. They circulated it, and at a surface level, maybe it didn't look so important. Some, some orders have lost it, but I am 100% sure that um, in the next 20 years, in the next 50 years, and it, it'll, it'll, be restored to these groups when they realize this is the, the common system, the orders all shared and circulated. And I suspect within a hundred years that this will be um, restored in full to all the esoteric orders, you know, and it's not every day. Like you said, most of these orders, some of them don't see eye to eye or you, you get students saying, well, I'm from this group and they, you know, don't want to know about the other group. Well, they have a lot more in common than they think because of this system. And it's a tangible system. We talked about this last time. Many orders claim to have some secrets or, or they fizzle out when you get to the inner order or people, you know, feel the need to go and study Eastern systems because the, the Western systems didn't deliver. But um, again, there was a time when when these Western fraternities had a very complete system of, of um, spiritual alchemy, a Western system. And this is our heritage and this is what we have to restore. And that's what I'm working on. Wow. So uh, you mentioned... I, I believe in, in one of your posts on pan sofers about an etheric link. And, and this mysterious mis etheric link actually kind of got you into all of this, right? Uh, sent you on, on your journey. So can you tell us uh, about how you got interested in Kerning and Mylander and what the heck is an ethereal link? 
a theoric link, sorry. Right. So when I was doing the GD thing, you know, the Fadi Ra, Stella Maratina side, Falcon gave out in New Zealand a thing called a theoric link. And he got it from Rudolf Steiner. And this etheric link is supposedly, you know, a connection to the etheric body of Christian Rosenkreuz, the initiator. But you have to bear in mind, again, for, for Steiner, Christian Rosenkreuz is John the Evangelist, okay? And for Germany at the time, John the Evangelist was Alois Mylander. That was his spiritual name, a real man who lived from 1847 to 1905. So this etheric link, when I got this from the New Zealand branch, okay, and it's used in, in um, uh, Falcon Stella Matutina, it actually had two sides to it. It had this etheric link, this transmission in the, in the GD, it's normally given out in the 7th or grade. And in addition, Falcon implemented some things called the process documents, okay? And little did I know at the time the significance, because when I got the etheric link, I was told, yeah, the process documents existed. Um, everyone said they're important. Um, the people involved who had looked at them thought they weren't very important. So no one actually had copies at the time. I come to Germany with this etheric link, and it's meant to be a spiritual transition, as uh, transmission. And for me, things happened, because these missing process documents I found on the German side when I got here. And um, um, we mentioned this on my blog, that Tony Fuller was actually the one to then hand us the Stella Matatina ones, because I was talking to him about what I found, you know, and, and he realized that, you know, I, I found the same thing, so he handed me the Falcon copy. But again, these Falcon things came from Rudolf Steiner. And these, these are internal alchemy exercises done through the coding system to awaken syllables and words on the body, to awaken the inner word. Now, um, there were oral traditions associated to that that seemed to be lost, let's say, on the Stella Maritina side, but I've been, able, I've been able to find them on the German side. And lo and behold, not only did Steiner have them, but the OTO had it as well. And this begins a very important and interesting story because, you know, if the GD had it and Steiner had it and the OTO had it, well, who else had it? And, and that opens a whole can of worms and um, took me to all, all kinds of places. And today's OTO, okay, it's um, a Crowley system, a Thelemic system, but I'm talking about the, the pre-Crowley OTO. And um, nobody seems to really know what the early OTO really taught for its alchemy. Yeah. Can you dive into that a little bit more? Because I think some people might be surprised that there was an OTO before Crowley. And so, so where does the kerning Marylander technique come into it? You know, what's so special about this form of it? Like, why do you like it? And, and I know last episode we talked about sexual currents, sex currents. I think if people think about OTO and Crowley, right, that, that's where their, their brain is going to go. So maybe if you could kind of talk about perhaps some differences between what Crowley was doing with uh, uh, sexual symbolism and uh, what might be going on with, uh, with the original OTO version of the kerning technique. Right, right. Well, this even opens up the thing. Did, did the Stella Maritina have sex teachings or not? Apparently not. All the GD experts say, no, the Golden Dawn did not have any sex teachings. Well, straight from the horse's mouth, from a former um, um, leader of, of the Stella Maritina, her name's Stoddard, she, she actually complained about the sexual nature of, of the Kerning documents that Falcon had. Mm -hmm. And why is she doing that? That's because Steiner got them from the OTO. Okay. Um, but Steiner has several versions. There's many versions. So let me just start out with a quick definition of, of the four versions that I classify. Because, you know, Plummer's SRIA has them, or had, let's say. Um, behind L, uh, Rosicrucian Fellow Fellowship was tied into this. So many groups. So right now, um, in our last talk, I, I just we talked about Koning 1.0. That's his original system, a, a version of internal Masonic alchemy with the alphabet and opening of the body. Um, uh, to open your body to the vowels. And then in his other variation, he has the Lord's Prayer to awaken the body, work down to the feet. And then from, from the feet upwards, you build up a new body, a new body of glory and a new physical body. That's Koning 1.0. Um, you'd have to check the last episode where I go into that in full. Koning 2.0, Mylander comes along, who should be John the Evangelist returned, and an enlightened Western adept, um, which you don't see often in the Western path, but there was a secret Rosicrucian master in Germany that many came to study with. 
um, and all kept secret. He was a real person. He he awakens to his word. He revises the kerning system. He he takes it further. He makes it far more intuitive, and and um, um, it's very Sophianic. It's very close to Yucca Burma, and he talks about the baptism of the blood, and the physical body is very important. Now, some of his students were theosophists. Okay, so that's where you have the Kerning 3.0 method. Here, the chakras got involved, or Kundalini, um, e even Tibetan um, tumor type influences, awakening the inner fire. So the Kerning 3.0 method um, is quite similar. You, you build up a new body from the feet, but with Kundalini involved, let's say, um, and also a, a switching of the lights from yoga. So, and then you have the final version of, of the Koning work, which is the sexualized version. I call that Koning 4.0. And what happened there, just, just to be clear, some of my Landers students were members of the Hermetic Brotherhood of Luxor. Okay, and that, that there they were teaching sexual alchemy. And by sexual alchemy, I don't mean physical having sex. I mean internal regeneration, cycling the sexual energy, the creation of a new spiritualized substance Okay, to, and, and that spiritual substance was directed upwards to awaken the word. So that's the Koning 4.0 method. Just to go a little bit deeper into that, because it really has an impact on the OTO version. Um, the, the, the sex force is consecrated with the astral light. Okay, so you, you descend with the astral light, it sinks to the yes of the sex force, it consecrates the sex force. Um, there's a bit of celebrity here, which is quite unusual because you don't expect that in the OTO, but actually in the earlier stuff, they were practicing celebrity. Why? They wanted to build an excess. I'm not talking about full-blown, all-the-time celebrity all year round. You know, some documents show they did it for periods, okay? And they would conserve this force, and the gathered sex force would be consecrated with the light. This would create the new spiritual substance, and this spiritual substance um, would awaken gnosis, or even the word at the throat, the larynx would pr pronounce the, 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 the new word. And um, this was called the new covenant. Once that sex force was consecrated, it's called the new covenant. So that version, actually, what's, in, what's important here is um, the HBL, the Hermetic Brotherhood looks of sexualized coding version, came about 10 years before the OTO if ever was created. So we're talking mid 1890s that was already devised and completed. So what I'm basically saying is, is Roy's um, and, and um, Carl Kellner, bear in mind, Carl, 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 Carl Kellner, the founder of the OTO, was a student of Mylander as well. And, and, and he clearly knew about people doing yoga and sexual alchemy with the coding techniques. Um, so that's, that sort of brings us to where we are right now and understanding these four variations and, and why is one more yogic? Why is one more sexual? Do you, do you have any questions about that so far? Uh, no, no. Um, I guess, oh, do you want to continue on the uh, the OTO version? Well, I mean, this is a big claim, because first of all, how, how can you prove that you have the OTO version? There's, there's not many documents about this. You know, so this, this in itself might upset people. Okay, what I can basically say, what, there was an order, like I said, 10 years um, that started 10 years before the OTO, and they already had that system. Now, all the OTO offshoots, and there was a lot of them, we're talking about Heinrich Tranker's order, you know, his Pan-Sophical College, you have um, Krumheller's FRA, okay? Um, all, all these OTO offshoots were using the same system. And it's the exact same system that appeared 10 years before the OTO, okay? And why is, why is that important? Well, if, if the proto or, or this order from before the OTO had it and the ones after, well, it passed, it essentially passed through the OTO intact. Now, um, looking at Crowley's writings, Alistair Crowley, you, you can't see the system so clearly. It's not so obvious. But if you have the um, right documents, you suddenly realize some things Crowley's writing about that are considered Crowley's own teaching, part of his own thelema. Sometimes he's actually commenting on this early pre-OTO system, okay? 
So last episode, uh, Steiner actually came up quite a bit. Is, is it controversial that, that Steiner was involved with this work? Do amphrosophists still still do this technique, or is it something that, that, that they've left behind? Or can you tell us any, anything about that? Right. So um, the difficult thing for anthroposophists is Steiner was doing so many different things. Okay. And once you're able to gather all the different materials from the different orders, you realize, oh, Steiner had the teachings of this order and that order. So you're sort of able to compare, you know. Um, and and wh where does this leave us with the OTO stuff as well? Well, I'm, 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 can you repeat this final part of the question? We're going to have to go back a bit. I've lost oh. my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Are, are Ephrosophists, I don't know if I'm saying that right, Steinerites, followers of Steiner, uh, doing it right now? Like, is it still a living tradition for them? Or is it something that, you know, fell out of, of those circles? Well, here's the interesting thing. Royce um, gave the OTO, or, or let's say the Miserium right to Steiner, mm -hmm. okay? And and because of that, this happened in 1905, 1906, that was really valuable because Steiner has gotten the OTO stuff and he's run off with it, okay? He's made off with the goods. Now, we could consider that like a time capsule because when Crowley comes along and, and changes the OTO, a lot of it is now indistinguishable. indistinguishable. But... Um, because Steiner has recorded it and, and, and taken it away and outside of that, well, you're able to compare what he's, he's taken with a lot of this other early OTO stuff. So you, you were really now able to identify what was the early OTO system. Yeah. Now, just, just I'll give you an example. Crowley is, um, has, has a psalm. He calls it Psalm 69. He's being ironic because, you know, sexual positions. Psalm 69, the way to succeed or the way to suck eggs. And in this, he mentions the word. Okay. Now, this is considered a sexual position, but he actually says the secret of the psalm is in the title and the number, the shape of the number, 69, and suck eggs. Well, if you look at the word suck and eggs, you have two parts of the body. And the 69 shows a clear reversal. Now, uh, Crowley is actually commenting here on, on the early free Crowley um, OTO inner alchemy, because that same reversal appears in all of the other variations from before the OTO and after. And some of the, some of the instructions related to that, especially in, in the proto OTO order, are so very specific that, you know, they show up in Heinel and Steiner and all these offshoots, so you know what's going on. They get very detailed. I mean, Stein is talking about the exact same reversal. He, he says that the sex force is reversed in man and it becomes the whole, um, the whole grail because it raises up to the larynx and pronounces the inner word. That same description appear, appears in Plummer's um, American SRIA because Max Heindel handed it to him. Okay, And all these offshoots, um, Gustav Meyerink is talking about the same reversal of these inner forces. So it's quite easy. You, you can spot the patterns. You can see who's in contact with who. But like I said, it gets very detailed. You're really able to do a comparison. And that's what I'm going to publish. I'm going to show everyone all this stuff side by side. Yeah. I, I think we, we both have a fondness for Memphis Misrium, uh, or perhaps I should say Misrium because, you know, the, the Memphis is a bit rubbish. But um, did, did it make its way into any, any, into any of those orders uh, or into its higher degrees? Because, of course, Memphis Misrium has this mysterious arcane of a quorum, that I can never say that right, uh, that became a big deal in the 80s and seems to be some form of, of inner alchemy. So is, is this related at all, or did any groups pick it up? And I know sometimes it's difficult because people sometimes think of these groups as, as one thing, but of course, you know, there's no central authority and people get a charter and start their own Memphis Misrium order. Um, but yeah, can, can you tell me about that? Well, I mean, first, first of all, when we say our kind of norms, I, I think you've said it to me in private once before. Do, do you know roughly the date when, because before, before the Arcana Arcanorum degrees, the high degrees should be administrative degrees. So do you know roughly when they became, suddenly they had spiritual alchemies? No, I, I, I don't at all. Oh, well, Milko Bogart publishes this in 1985. All of a sudden, a Memphis Mysterium group claims to have these spiritual alchemies and called the Arcana Arcanorum. And all of a sudden after that, all the other Memphis Mysteriums suddenly have their own version, you know, and they're quite funny because, you know, they're, they're all creating different things. But... Yeah, you're right. That there is um, a continuation. I have found a, a French group, okay, that 
clearly got hold of the OTO version of the kerning work, the sexualized kerning work, and um, implemented that in French orders. And, you know, the, the Belgian Memphis Museum from Mellinger was right there next door to the German. So, of course, it escaped through, through Germany. Um, Michael Sanborn, I think his name is, he just published a book um, about Remy Boyer and this illuminism of, of Martinism, the awakening. And in there, they show the Martinist version of kerning exercises. So how did that get to France? And it is kerning work. Okay, so again, all these orders are tied to this one system. Now, many Arcana Arcanorum guys met this misery, and of course they claim it's all very old and goes back to gosh knows when. Um, and, and, and just to emphasize the difference with the, the sex, sexualized version, in Mylander and Kerning, you're awakening the word and the word will live in you. You'll hear and feel the body, okay? These vowels and sounds will come to life. You'll have a dialogue with your heart. Now, in the sexualized version, the sex force becomes something that um, uh, awakens in the head and in the throat. Um, the sex force is sent to the feet. It fills up the body like a qigong as well. This consecrated substance is very practical. Now, a friend of mine, he recently asked me, because um, um, he, he's a teacher of Eastern stuff, and I was talking to him about all the coding stuff, and he said, you know, Sam, are you sure this stuff isn't influenced by Eastern things? You know, I explained, yes, the Theosophists had an Eastern influence one, but Koenig 4.0, the sexualized one, you know, Randolph, the sex, sex magician, that's what they had in Germany. They were looking at that, and he's just talking about raising the sex force up to the head. That's all. But when it meets Koenig, suddenly it becomes very practical. The sounds, the syllables, the mantras, the way it's directed in the body, beautiful exercises, suddenly becomes very practical. So um, that is an authentic wedding between Kerning, you know, 1840s, and, and Randall's sexual system. When, when, what year was he? I don't know, 1870s? He's quite before the Golden Dawn. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So those two heritage, those, those two lineages come, come together in, in the Kerning 4.0 system. And that's why it truly is an authentic Western alchemy. Um, so last episode, we, we talked a little bit about Kabbalah, possible Kabbalistic influence upon this work, but, but I would say the most famous and, and accessible to, to lay men and women version of this technique is, is the famous uh, Czech hermeticist Franz Barton, right? He, he has a whole book uh, that has his version, which is using the Hebrew letters. Uh, it's laid out in excruciating detail. So how would he get it? And why don't we just do his version, right? Because th that's the one that's been floating around, easy to find. You can download it. You can get it from the library. So, so, so tell us about, about Bardon and, and his version. Bardon does some funny things. And, and uh, I have to be careful what I say because the Kerning thing is a, be a beautiful system and we're all part of it, really. So what I firstly probably should say is... And here's an interesting point. I think you've seen this, and I, I know everyone kicks on the Golden Dawn. It's just that they're so well known. It's easier to illustrate through the GD. But you probably noticed the trend in the Golden Dawn scene at the moment. You know, you've got people who say, well, the Stella Meditina rituals are more advanced, and they're more alchemical, and they're better written, so we're doing those. And you've got others who will go, well, we're doing the earlier system. And if you do the original rituals, we are, the, you know, we're closer to the original thing. And then you've got people who say, well, we do the alpha and omega versions because that's what matters intended and all of a sudden people don't like each other over such a silly thing they're all doing golden dawn rituals but they sort of start to sort of have a little spite over this issue as if it's even somehow remotely important they're literally doing the same system okay i mention this because you know these bad on guys um we are in the same boat that's for sure i want to start there but you know, Baron says, don't do kerning. You know, he, he says, don't do kerning, don't start from the feet. He says a few things about kerning that are not quite true, actually. Um, he says kerning starts from the feet. That's not true. Franz Hartmann was the first one to say that, and, and they both made a mistake, because kerning starts at the top of the body, at the head. He works his way down, to, and then he gets to the feet. So they really start from above, with the vowels, with the letters. And um, this depends, again, on how many versions of, of um, Kony Baron had access to. But, I mean, I, I would ask you a simple question regarding Baron. 
Can you will yourself to God or can you concentrate your way to heaven? Mm. I'm saying this simply because um, Baron's system comes from the, the Karl Weinwörter and Meyerink Lodge. And there they had mystical Christianity. You know, what Baron has done, he's gutted out the mystical Christian experiences, the Christ formed, the, the presence of the Holy Spirit, you know, um, the wind that blows upon you when working with the bells, there's certain signs and strange things that happen. These presences are activations and initiations from the Holy Spirit. He, he's cut that out. I don't know if you didn't like Christianity, I, I can't say, but he's removed that and he said, well, we'll do the hermetic way. Um, he's taken the exercises without that, let's say, spirit, which is fine because others, other Koenig practitioners did that too. That there's one guy in Germany, he was like a Koenig saint in, in the 1930s. The, the Nazis couldn't catch him. And, and um, um, he, he switched out the Christian stuff. He was using Egyptian mantras. I've got um, one version of the Koenig work where they're using Nietzsche for the mantras to awaken the Ubermensch. Good lordy. Now, I don't know if Nietzsche did this. He does mention the feet, and he was talking to Steiner. They were meeting. I don't know if this document is from Nietzsche, but certainly Nietzsche's words and statements were used on the body. So Baron is not alone in, in, in um, throwing out that mystical Christian stuff. There are many versions of this, fascinating versions. So, um, um, there, so there are some interesting things when it comes to Baron. But the main thing I want to point out is... Um, it's good to have your hands on all the systems before you decide, because some of his cred credibility comes from these stories. You know, he's meant to have been captured by the Nazis and they tried to get his magical powers and interrogate him, but he wouldn't give in. Um, if, if that's a measurement of, of his status, I will publish the fact that quite a few other Koenig practitioners were captured the same way. Weinwerder was put into um, um, labor camps twice, you know, and like I said, one of them evaded um, 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 capture many times. So this strange story, strange events around Koenig practitioners. And, and um, recently we were reading some of them. Uh, and, and Christine, you know, I gave her the documents. She said, oh, Sam, some of the stuff that these guys would it sounds like Madame Blavatsky's masters. It sounds really weird. You know, some of the things that they were supposed to be doing. But where I want to really focus on um, the Baron thing is, you know, he's very formulatic. He, he's very, it's a program, a set of rules, formulas, and it's a program, it's very clear. But, um, you know, people can get very attached to their own system, you know, and that's why I mentioned this GD thing, everyone's in their own world. And, and when you're in that thing, um, it's quite hard sometimes to see what's outside of it. So what Bardon essentially did, and I'm talking about practice here, you know, 777, Kabbalistic correspondences, tables of correspondences, that's a big thing in hermetics. Well, he um, took the letters and he looked at the way people practice and he looked at the associations of the Sefer Yetzira and this letter applies to the arms, this letter applies to the heart, this to the chest, this to the back. And for him, you should only practice that letter on the hands, only that letter on the shoulder, only this letter on the legs, you see? Mm -hmm. This is the only thing I, I am not um, a, a fan of in terms of practice because in all the other curling variations, you experience the body, uh, the, the, the letter in your whole body, the whole body. You absorb it, you feel it. It does its magic. It works its, its alchemy through the organs, through the bones. It's got to pass through everything. So anyone could probably um, adapt Koenig's, um, uh, sorry, but on system that way, that's where I sort of feel like it looks good on paper if you've got these Kabbalistic associations, but when it comes to the mystical experience, I can tell you firsthand which one I'm going to stick with and, and why all the others did that, okay, and, and that's really what I'd like to say about the Baron system. Yeah. So you, you mentioned non-Christian versions, and uh, I'm fascinated by this Nietzsche version. Uh, I hope I hope you publish it in your second book, which we'll talk about at the end. But 
the most the other most accessible version is, is probably Shebendorf. I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but you know you, you've mentioned him a, a few times. He he, uh, he published a book which is which has been back in print for for a little while now, where he got a he claims he got an Islamic version from a a fusion lodge in Turkey that was both uh, Sufi and Freemasonic, possibly Rosicrucian, and they're using these mysterious letters that are in the Quran that open up some chapters of the Quran and Islamic mystics have been arguing, pondering, thinking about these mysterious letters. Nobody's quite sure what they mean. And, and his story, I mean, people love mysterious lodges, mysterious teachers. There's lots of origin stories that if I would be polite are mythical, right? There's less polite terms I could use. But for whatever reason, you know, his his tale, it, it kind of rings true to me. And by the time he's discovering this lodge, you know, this is almost 100 years. I mean, it is 100, almost 100 years after Kerning. So it makes sense to me that the technique could have got, uh, uh, made its way to to Turkey and uh, got combined with some things. Or maybe there was a stream of letter mysticism in uh, Islamic mystical circles already, and then they, they combined the two. But yeah, what, what are all your thoughts on, on, on the Shevendorf version, on his origin story, on and possible links to Islamic letter mysticism? That's a huge topic. But first of all, you mentioned something about most accessible, because Baron, it's at the moment Baron and, and Zabutendorf. Um, now, Zabutendorf's version represents Kerning's um, first Masonic system, not his second public system. That, yeah. and, and most of the other orders use his public system. Okay, But yeah. regarding access, I, I would probably do a bit of a shout out here to Pope Runyon's books. He's done two books on Hermetic Yoga. One of them is Rosicrucian. And he, it's actually based on Subotendorf. And he's so very interesting in what he's done there because he's taken Subotendorf, which is based on Kerning. Yes, it is. And um, he's merged that with the middle pillar from Falcon, Stella, Melatina. And I just want to point out what's interesting here, because 120 years ago, Arnold Cromheller, founder of the FRA, he had the Golden Dawn rituals from Alistair Crowley and the Thelemic stuff, vibration, intonations, pentagrams, all that stuff. And he had um, the coding system from the OTO and Steiner. He had both of their different ones. And if you look at um, the FRA's kerning variation, it's quite close to what Pope Runyon has done. It's like history repeated itself somehow by magic. I have no doubts that Pope Runyon was divinely inspired. This isn't created in an intellectual way. This is guided. And um, without him knowing about the history of these other kerning groups and that such a thing has happened before, he's literally um, come out with a system that's bang on like, like uh, what some practitioners did. So really hats off to him. But back to um, Sapotendorf. Yes, his system. He. It's a yes and no, if if, if it's Turkish or not. And what I mean to that is he's literally plagiarized Koenig's book called Letters of the Royal Art, which is going to be published by my mate Ian pretty soon. He's translated it. Those letters were written from Koenig to Molitor. They were hidden in Frankfurt. They were never meant to be published. That's that's one thing I should point out. These were secret. So that's this hidden esoteric Masonic system. Swartendorf knew that the orders were using that. You know, not just OTO, but pretty much all of them. Um, but what's happened, he's, he's mentioned, he goes to Turkey, and he mentioned the, these meeting these Bektashi Sufis. Okay, Bektashi are a very unusual order. Um, they do the Eucharist, they drink wine, they're having all the fun. But um, within their system, it's not like an inner order, let's call it an inner teaching. They, they have letter mysticism. And this stuff is mind-blowingly profound. And I have no doubts that when he saw that, he believed he had discovered the original thing. Now, um, if you do an analysis of, of what he found, the Batashi are carrying the lineage and, and, and the teachings of a group called the Harufi, a, a um, sect from um, Iran about 1,200 years ago. What's funny about them, by the way, is their founder, Fazala, claimed to be the second coming of Christ. Okay, mm -hmm. The rest of the world's waiting for Christ. They think he already came. But Fazala was a letter mystic, mystic. And, and these harufi, the meaning of the word haruf in Arabic is letters or alphabet. So they, are, they call themselves the alphabetist. And the Bhaktashi carry the documents and oral traditions and their practices are so very close to Kerning. And their doctrines, are, are, I mean, in, in their doctrine, um, God created Adam, but Adam was a tablet. 
God wrote upon this tablet 32 divine words. That's the Persian alphabet, by the way. They also use the Arabic alphabet. And for them, half of the Arabic alphabet are lunar letters and the other half is solar. So you already see the alchemy there. Yeah. Now, when, with the Harufi, they practice receiving the letters into the body. They do fasting. And again, it's to awaken the word. And this Adam, this holy tablet, well, for them, Eve, his wife, Eve is the physical body. Okay, so they're very, very internal al alchemy guys. And their line goes right back. So no doubt, um, um, that's what Sibutov's really talking about. He, he's, he's reinvigorating the Koenig tradition what, with what he considers the old line. Um, another similarity, I mean, this is so bang on close. Koenig uses the hands to make the letters I with the finger, A with, with an angle, with the thumb and, and the index finger, the O by closing the, the index finger and, and the thumb. So he initiates the physical action of the ER or before starting his inner alchemy. And they can trigger things if you know what you're doing. Um, Fazala, he, he actually says the line, the angle, and the curve, just like Koenig, the line, the angle, and the curve, which is E, R, O. But he says that the name Allah represents the line, the angle, and the curve. If you look at the Arabic spelling of Allah, you'll see it. It's quite visual. It literally is like an E, R, O. But they don't use the hand signs. He says that the prostration, the very first prayer, the way you bend down, and then the second position, and the way you prostrate yourself in the third position, you're spelling the name of Allah. It's mm -hmm. and that's basically what Koenig was doing with Yao. You know, so um, wow, the parallels. You know, so that that's what he's about. Um, yeah, very interesting stuff. The Harufi, um, and, and there is a nice thick book published about. I've, I've got it here. It's by Orkan Mir Kazimov. It's academic, but. Um, a nice shortcut to picking up many of the doctrines of awakening the word. Okay, very cool. So uh, I, I guess we're getting into to wrap up uh, uh, territory here, but a very, very important question, Sam, which is why did you write your book, your book which has just come out, and tell us about the book. And I understand that there will be a part two, so please tell us about that as well. Before, before I do that, um, I just want to close with, with a bit of a treat. OK, because I, I know some OTO people are going to listen to what I've said today and gone, what the hell's going on here? What what early OTO inner alchemy, um, you know, and, and uh, Anthropos office, you know, he Steiner claimed that uh, he didn't take anything from Royce, but it's quite clear he was teaching it. But let's cut to the chase. Carl Kellner was the student of Alois Mylander, a coding practitioner. Royce was the other founder of the OTO. And here's what they said. I'm going to read you something. Um, it's, a, it's a proclamation. And they basically say, okay, something about the Kerning tradition. Now, when you hear this, you have to bear in mind Kerning's method is to awaken the word, and his teaching is to open the temple of Solomon and man. These are two points. So this is called the secret of the high grades of our orders, a manifesto of the great Orient. Okay, it's published in the Ari Farmer, Ari Farmer, Berlin, June 1903. Here's what they write. It's by Carl Kanner and Royce. They write, unfortunately, it is a settled fact that most of the initially greatly zealous Lodge brothers, after some time, account for the largest percentage of the number of disappointed and dissatisfied Freemasons. Such brothers existed in all times, and such brothers point out in vain the teachings contained in, for example, Kerning's writings for Freemasons. They read these writings, they read these words, but the spirit, the deeper inner sense of them, remains foreign and closed to them. The secret of our order, sorry, the secret that our order possesses in its highest degree is that it provides the properly prepared brother with the practical means of establishing the true temple of Solomon and man, of rediscovering the lost word, that is, our order shall initiate selected brothers providing him with the practical means that enable him to obtain evidence of his immortality, even in this earthly life. Okay, so literally, Carl Kalman and Royce are saying, we're going to teach, we have the practical keys to coding. That's what they're saying. You know, it's pretty important stuff. Now, back to your question. Um, what, what, what do you, know, you want to know about 
That's the books. why and about and, and about the, the two books. Yeah, and about the content in them and uh, yeah, and when the second one will come out, where people can get the first, all of that stuff. Sam, lay it on us. Well, um, I'm not an academic. First of all, I'm not a historian, even though I'm, I'm writing right now quite historical based books. Now, um, this first book, Mylander, about Mylander, this is to lay a foundation. Okay. We now can establish a fact it was a Rosicrucian adept or master. The second book I'm doing, it's um, called The Rosicrucian Fraternities in the Wake of J.B. Kearney, Alois Mylander. This is to establish the fact with his clear documentation that all of these Rosicrucian and occult orders like the OTO really use this method. Okay, the, These two books are historical. They are to establish a basis, a springboard, let's say. So then, you know, we're not going to claim to have an, a hidden German resolution edit. We're not going to claim that there is a secret of secret in all these orders. That that does no good for anyone. We're going to prove it. And with this historical foundation, we um, are going, I believe, that the whole purpose here is, is, is to give a rebirth to the tradition. Ultimately, um, it's a heritage for all of us that I think we can all share in, and enjoy. So ultimately, we are going to just simply publish all of it. That's our goal. Set it free. Very cool. Very cool. Well, everybody, buy that book. And uh, you can get it on Amazon. I'm sure you have it linked, it, uh, linked up at pansofers.com, right? Um, uh, and the title is um, Alois Mylander, A Rosicrucian Remembered. Perfect. Perfect. Check that out, everybody. Check out pansofers.com. And, and and I think that's it for now. I'm, I'm sure you will be back, Sam. I'm sure we will have uh, lots more discussions about this and related topics, because even though it sounds like we, we got pretty exhaustive with these two episodes, in some ways we're only scratching the surface. So uh, that, thanks again, and good night. Thank you, too. Bye. Thank you.